thank you so much for joining me here live. I'm so excited today to share with you some more tips on how to improve your beautiful psychic gifts and how to get more connected with your psychic gifts. So I just need to check that everything's working. Yes, perfect. <laughs> it's always different. I've just arrived back home after being on the road for two months. So I'm kind of adjusting and moving everything around in the first week being back home. Um, a lot of my stuff's still in storage, which is why I'm in my lounge room and you don't see my backdrop. Um, so thank you for joining me, everybody. I'd love to see who's with me today. I am very excited to share with you some really fantastic tips that are going to expand and accelerate your psychic development. And I base these tips on questions that get asked throughout the month and throughout the weeks in the Psychic Facebook group here and on the Q&A board. So who's with me? Crystal, hello, <laughs> nice to see you. I'm also going to be sharing a brand new competition where you have the chance to win a free career reading with me and appeal in my next course. So I'll talk about that more later after we get through our beautiful questions. And I'm also gonna be sharing some answers to you about working with specific guides and if you've got specific problems and specific um, angels that you want to work with, how you can do that in the easiest and quickest way. We're also going to be looking at using timing and oracle cards and how you can do that. As well as I'm going to talk a bit about the PDF template for feedback in this group. If you're not aware of it already, it's something that's really important to make sure you're getting a lot of feedback when you are posting free offers to practice and making sure that people are getting back to you on time. And I'm also going, I've got one more thing and I've forgotten what it is. Oh, what does it mean if you see an animal? Like on, so you're tuning into someone and you see an animal. So I'm gonna talk a bit about that as well. So before I begin, I just would love to thank the following people, Mitzi, Jarmet, Anthea, Dr. Namrata and Shirley for your amazing reviews. And for everyone else who has reviewed How To Be Psychic in the last few weeks, Thank you so much. It means so much to me that you've taken the time. Not just, I mean, it's so wonderful when people click the stars, but when you actually write a comment too, and that really helps other people who would want to know if the course is for them. But it also helps me as well in knowing that my course is doing what I've set out for it to do. So thank you. So who have we got here? We have Shalini. Hello, lovely Lynn. Hello, Pamela from MA, I assume is Massachusetts. That's my American geography <laughs> worked out. <laughs> um, Lorraine, hello. Hi, Tiara. Hello, Lusheed. Hi, Gigi Nail Art. I love that name. <laughs> Melanie, hello. Paresh, Liz, thank you. Monica, hello, Shruti. Hi, guys. It's so wonderful to have you all here. So um, those of you who have been to my psychic seminars here before, what I usually do is I will start to explore the questions that I've been asked and, and answer them. And sometimes I'll go off on a little bit of a tangent and add some more information in. Depends on what's going on with the guides and angels today. But if you have a question, I'll open up the floor at the end for you to ask that question. So just if you, if you think, oh, I really wanna ask her about this, just jot it down and put it towards the end. Okay, so I'm just gonna start with, Probably a question that I get asked the most. I do tend to get asked it more in my tarot card success course than how to be psychic. Uh, I think because I do explain a lot about timing in this course. So I think a lot of people are a little bit more aware about how timing works. So basically the, for me, when you're working with guides and angels and when you're working with cards, let me get rid of that, thank you. Um, when that's happening, it's really important to remember that, they, that the higher beings, that, that they don't have a concept of time like we do. So time's something that we use to measure our lives. But in the world of the non-physical realm, there is all, just always, there's no, um, there, there's no in three months time this will happen. But we are obviously as humans very determined to know the answers of when things are gonna happen. Now, I feel like having a broad parameter of when, like what I mean by that is, okay, is, is, is you know, things going to start to shift in my work in the next year or in the next six months? I think that's a good thing. I don't have a problem with that. But when people get obsessed, and, and I understand why they do, and I used to as well, with understanding specifically when dates are going to happen, I feel like you're doing yourself a massive disservice as a psychic and in your own personal journey. Because what can happen with readings, whether it be tarot or whether it be oracle cards, is that we have certain spiritual lessons to learn here on earth. And 
there is not a time on that. There is not, okay, in in six and a half days, you'll have finished learning this spiritual lesson. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. And I'd often really be honest with you, wish it did. So understanding time is much, it's much better to ask, what is it I need to know? So those of you who have done psychic readings intermediate level, I have a whole massive section on time in that course and different ways that I use it in my readings and how I get that information. But the number one answer, if you really want to do time, if you really want to know when am I going to get a new job or you really want to know, if, and you don't want to do the what do I need to know about getting a job, is intuition. Like it really is. And people don't like that answer. They want me to give them a magic formula often especially with the tarot like they want me to give them some special formula that's going to tell them exactly the date or the month they're going to get married or meet their soulmate and again I understand why we want this certainty and I understand why we feel like we have to know this but in in the world of up there like it's 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 it doesn't work that way it's not that black and white because often and, and what best way I often describe and I talk about this a fair bit in psychic readings intermediate level especially when you're thinking about meeting a soulmate like what if your soulmate's not ready for you like what if they are in a relationship and they're really unhappy and they've got them like you don't want to get involved with someone who's already in a relationship or you know if you do and anyone who ever has knows that's really hard work that's a lot of pain so sometimes things need to fall into place and so that's why I'm a big fan of what do I need to know like what do I need to do put the ball back in your court be the creator and master of your own destiny and that way you'll feel so much more empowered to understand what you need to do to make things happen quicker and you know that's that's my biggest advice for that because obviously we all want things to happen now sometimes things aren't meant to happen now and I have got a thousand experiences those of you who've done some of my intermediate courses will be familiar with them of when I've thought I have to have this now and I have to know now and it has to be happening right now and found out later oh my god thank god it didn't happen then I really needed more time I really needed something else to happen and shift and change first so that's how I look at readings I Oracle cards, you can like obviously do a bigger kind of spread. You can do a 12 month spread. You can say to yourself, okay, what's gonna happen in the next 12 months? And you can even like pull a card for each month and, and start to see what the, what the journey is going to look like. I have in some of my more intermediate level courses, a more 12 month reading with Oracle cards where it's just a five card spread. So it's kind of like long-term, uh, long sorry, long, long term past. So long, long term, recent past. So that in the last few months to 18 months, the now kind of period, the next few months, and then the on to 12 month period. So you can also try that as well. But I'm a big fan of not going beyond 12 months because you need to allow your beautiful life to come in with changes and to come in with whatever your destiny is kind of going to throw in for you to learn. So I hope that's helped a little bit more with timing of Oracle cards. You can look at a kind of five card, 12 month spread like that, or even like a card for each month. You can look at saying, okay, instead of when, what do I need to know? Or, and you can just go into practicing your intuition. And it was funny because today I had this, I had this, um, so this, this um, person from my tarot card success course, he had really wanted to know more about timing. And I had said to him, well, just go in psychic readings intermediate level. If you move on to that course, I have a massive section on timing. And so he went off and did psychic readings intermediate level. And in the in in that course, I do say in the beginning, it's important that you've done either high how to be psychic or some basic level of psychic development. Because understanding the when is, you know, and it, we understand a little bit more that tune it comes from intuition, like those kind of answers that for me, when I get, okay, when is someone, I feel like they're getting married maybe in two years or, you know, it's down the track a bit, that comes to me through intuition. There's no card that says to me two years. So I, I remember thinking, oh, actually, that, yeah, that's important to remember how much when based questions are on intuition. So if you really want to do when questions, practice and practice and practice on your intuition. Practice connecting with your guides. Practice going in and strengthening your clairvoyance and other gifts and your clairaudience. And then you'll get those stronger answers that you'll feel more confident about. But as I said, be wary with when. It's, it's not always a, um, a golden ticket, I guess. <laughs> it can lead to some problems. So I hope that has helped my love. I just want to check in and see. Oh, hello. 
Oh, Crystal, your husband says the Aussie accent makes him miss home so much. You're in lockdown in Bolivia and can't get back to Sydney. Oh, sweetie, you must be missing it so much. And say thank you, your husband. When I was overseas and lived overseas, I missed the Australian accents as well. So I can totally understand that. Hello from Yamba. Oh, I used to live near Yamba. Joe. I grew up in Byron, so I know that area very well. That's beautiful. Pendulum, good to use for time and good tip, Michelle. Awesome. Oh, Crystal, if you can't get a... Oh, I, I wish I could help more with this. Post this one in the group because I don't use apps for my, for my reading. So I know there are apps available. I know that lots of um, creators that make cards will do an app as well but because i've never used them it's harder for me to recommend them but why don't you post um in here saying who, who knows of any good oracle card apps i know the doreen virtue ones used to be all on apps i don't know if they still are but um yeah so doing that okay um liz so so sweetie this is um for how to be psychic i'm very happy to answer a tarot question but i'm just going to answer one because i don't want to confuse people because most of the people that are in this group haven't necessarily studied the tarot so um but just to, i will quickly answer that you can still give an accurate reading when you are starting out and you're trying to learn but eventually you probably want to put the court cards in Okay, so in the beginning while you're practicing that's okay but in the long term i definitely make sure the court cards are in there Cool. Okay. So I hope that's helped everyone with the when question. Do the what do I need to know or do a 12 month spread but, or, or practice on your intuition until those answers come in. And as I said, if you, if you want to go further with that, I do have a lot more about that in Psychic Readings Intermediate Level. So um, I had a great question that I always love these kind of questions where someone asked in the Q&A board, I, like I tuned into my client, like you suggested while I was reading and I saw a rabbit. What does this mean? So what I love about and what makes me so excited about, you know, when your psychic gifts start to open up like this is random stuff will come in like this and you probably freak out a bit and go, I don't know what that is. Why is that there? And then you can get a bit anxious. So the first thing I would say for me, when you're sharing that with your client, don't feel like you have to say, there's a rabbit. Like, do you have a rabbit? Or Because it can just be the energy of a rabbit. So share that with them. I've often gone, seen a dog or seen some kind of animal and they've gone, yes, my dog just passed away. Or yes, I'm, I'm having problems with my dog or, you know, something like that. So share that. Say, look, I'm having, there's really strong energy of whatever the animal is and share that with them. I am a big fan of learning a lot about what animals mean in different animal medicine and what they represent. So for me, a rabbit would straight away represent, if you know anything about Chinese medicine, rabbits often are very quiet, want to be at home and they want to be in their little burrow and they can be a little bit nitty and there's, you know, even that sexual side to rabbits <laughs> that we get. But so I would start to say, you know, are you feeling like you want to be more at home? Are you feeling a bit or, you know, something going on in the home world? Because often animals can appear as symbols of what's going Going on on a deeper level and it's just the way that the guides are communicating with us or the third thing is she could actually have a guide that's a rabbit so again learning a bit more about what it means to have a guide as a rabbit can help so you know don't feel like you're going to come off sounding a bit vague and and you know flippy floppy with that you're just trying to get to the bottom because it can mean two or three different things and the way our intuition works is sometimes you'll get it spot on sometimes you'll be like oh my god wow I can really see that you know there's something going on the rabbit home blah 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 but sometimes you'll just need to dig a little bit and work with them and bring them and collaborate with them to go deeper because sometimes it can be so random that even our minds won't be able to comprehend why possibly and I, I can't remember which course it is but I talk about one of this amazingly gorgeous client I had once who came to me and she was grieving and I could just see all this grief and I was trying to get to the bottom of why I could see all the grief and it turned out she, she worked on a sheep farm and her beautiful sheep were getting going to the lambing factory where they go so that they get eaten and and it was grieving her even though she loved working on the farm and and you know that's I know that sounds like a random thing but you know to, to precisely get that I had to work that with her so you know keep that in mind don't feel afraid to work with people to kind of find out what that kind of stuff means um Mindy I saw a grasshopper once and had no idea what it meant and I told my client and it was actually a nickname for someone oh wow see go with it like let tell them don't feel like you have to get it right just say okay there is this energy and this is what it is and that really really helps I love that that's really spot on 
Ah, uh, Shalini, Sal, is it possible while doing an oracle card reading for someone else, angels can drop in messages for myself too, but not the client? Look, they can, and that's a great question. It's interesting because I have found in my career that sometimes I will go through a massive healing crisis or a, a part of my journey will get elevated <laughs> to the surface of my living life and I'll have to deal with it and then I'll find I kind of find ways to deal with it and I bring in my angels and guides and I get all these messages and the next week I'll attract a client with nearly exactly the same problem and so yes angels can come come in and and I've often always seen with my healings and readings that it's you know it's 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 not about me, it's obviously about them, but sometimes it's often something I need to be really aware of too. And and really good healers and readers are very open and honest about that. Like I had one I had a kinesiology session a while ago and someone and I know the per was it that? I think it was that or another healing session I had and, and the lady went, Oh wow, I've just realised this message is for me as well <laughs> you know, and just laugh about that because yes, sometimes when we are that open, that's the way that messages come through. So yeah, definitely take note of that as well. Um Yukta, so hello lovely. Um I used to get dragons in front of my eyes around two days ago. What do dragons mean? So dragons can mean different things to different people. So keep in mind, I would do some research and look, especially start with your own culture because um, it, it can often be that we have a cultural connection to a dragon. Remember, different animals have different things. But I would also look at um, any kind of animal medicine book. There is a wonderful book by Ted Andrews about a animal medicine that I've always loved. So it, for me, sometimes when I see an animal on someone, and I remember, funnily enough, you say that the very first reading I gave in the shop, in the tarot shop that I worked in in Manly, I saw a dragon on the girl and I was auditioning. And at that exact moment, I knew exactly what it meant precisely for her. Now, a dragon interpretation might mean something very different for somebody else. So I would go, okay, what is a basic dragon? Dragons can mean, obviously, they breathe fire. They can also be incredibly protective. So they can be very protective either of their young or they can be very protective of the person. So sometimes I see a dragon and it's like, wow, this dragon doesn't want, is a guide of yours and they don't want me coming in. So maybe there's some deep wounds there where, you know, you've been hurt and someone, you know, any kind of psychic work or healing work or it's going to activate something and, they, and I have to work on appeasing that dragon and have a conversation. So it can mean different things. So what I would do is do a bit of research on as many animals as possible because, as I said, it might be, it depends on what that dragon was doing. If they were kind of protecting them, then it might mean they just, you know, they've got a guide that's protecting them. Or it might mean, as I said, that there's some fiery energy around them right now. So go in and have a look at that. As I said, it's, I'm uh, like specifically putting one animal to mean one definition doesn't always work because it can depend on the people. Yes. Do I have any tips on how to overcome blockages from made-up assumptions? For example, I have a strong belief in my mind that I can't access angels. That's not okay. No, that's no okay. So I have some. I have a course on that that can help a lot. It's called Boost Your Psychic Gifts with EFT Tapping. I highly recommend doing it because a lot of students that have done that have found that they can get to the root cause of why they have that belief because that's what you're looking for and and so ba basically you, you what you would do in that course is you would tap on that belief that um, I don't just you know you're trying to find out is it because you feel like you don't deserve it is it because you just don't believe in them because you think they're rubbish is it because you're afraid that if you start believing in them you'll have to believe in them all the time is it you know there could be 70 different reasons why that beliefs come into your life it could be something put on you by your parents it could be past life it could be because you in you know listen to angels in another life and bad things happen to you so that belief system like you could a either see a healer and, and see if they can get to the bottom of it or you can do it yourself by doing a course like that. So basically looking at where has it come from because when you know where it's come from, you're 50% healed and then you can work on like releasing it so that you feel comfortable and you believe it and, and you believe it's for your highest good and, and that faith and that trust and belief comes in. So I'd look at doing that, look at doing some kind of healing modality to get to the bottom of it because as I said, we all are so complex and it could be one of 70 different reasons. <laughs> it could be, and as you said, that random, it could be something that even I haven't thought of that maybe you tapping on and releasing on will actually bring up in your in your memory your subconscious memory you'll go oh, 
I remember that happened when I was a kid where, you know, maybe my sister said she saw an angel, everybody laughed at her or, you know, something like that. So it could be something deeply and intrinsically very personal. And, you know, as I said, doing a little bit of healing on that could open that up for you. I think that's all, yeah. I hope that's helped my love. Um, Monica, a clairvoyant told me that my sister-in-laws were doing black magic on you. What can you do to protect yourself? Any crystal or special thing? Okay, so first of all, I have really interesting stuff with black magic. Like, I do believe we, we get sent psychic attacks. I do believe people can be talking negatively and being angry on us and that affects us. And I'm married to a Sri Lankan and, and Sri Lankans are fascinating because my husband is, is, is Catholic. He was raised Catholic, but they also have a very strong connection to their own... I guess I would call it, I mean, it's a combination of Buddhism, but also they have a, you know, 2,000 year old history, well over 2,000, four or 4,000 years of this kind of stuff as well, you know, like the evil eye and, and you know, some of those things. And you often see that in, in cultures like Spain and, and in, you know, Brazil, where you've got this deep Catholicism, but you've also got this, you know, uh, ritualistic and this almost voodoo stuff coming in. And so for me, the first thing is I'd say, okay, I would like you to start praying to your angels and guides to help you release any fears around black magic. Because the thing that will get, trip you up with black magic is buying into it and getting afraid of it. And that'll weaken you in that way. So speak with your guides and say, write it down, pray to them before you go to sleep and say, anything that has been put on me that is black magic or dark, I'm gonna ask that to be completely released now. I'm gonna ask that to be gone. So I would start with that. Then you can look at doing things like sage. I love black tourmaline. I love pyrite. I love smoky quartz. Those protective crystals, wear them. But and then and you might want to practice maybe for like just every night for a week or even a couple of nights a week before you go to bed. Just visualize yourself being completely shielded and, and completely shielded in, in love and light and all your guides being with you and supporting you and protecting you. And and do it like that. And I often so something I do if I'm going out in a big crowd is I will um, the, the crystal hematite, there's a crystal called hematite. You don't even need to buy the crystal. You can just visualize what it looks like being all around you and shielding you powerfully from anything coming towards you, basically. So I would do that. I would also send love and compassion to them. I know that's hard to do when you think people are doing bad things to you, but I found one of the most powerful ways to heal any dark situation is love. And so ask your guides to help send compassion and love to these people, and that weakens it as well. It means it won't have such a hold on you. So try that, my love. Ah, uh, Shanti, while you were doing a reading for your friend, I was constantly doubting myself to be sure to come up with accurate readings. And a card fell from the deck saying, have confidence. That's so beautiful. I love that. Yes, and that's how it works. Like, we doubt ourselves, but there's no reason to. I mean, and as I mentioned before, sometimes we might need to do a bit of healing. We might need to do a, an extra course, or we might need to do a few extra meditation practices or work with the angels on a different level. But, you know, have that confidence. And I love it when they send those signs. That is awesome. Uh, Tiara, I've noticed that when I get really beautiful and profound messages that night, I usually experience nightmares or get a visit from a not so happy spirit. I'm wondering if this is normal. Okay. Um, I would suggest the first thing I always say to this, and not everybody loves the answer, is this could be a very powerful past life trigger. So this could mean that in a past life you, you, you did use healing gifts or you used midwifery or you used um, psychic gifts and on some level you were tormented or punished or hurt um, or abused and so as a result when those when you step into that beautiful space of activating and opening up and feeling open something bad happens so it's kind of like you're reliving that so I can suggest looking at my um, past life therapy course and see if you're open to that like we access the Akashic records and clear any past lifetimes of when you made have maybe made vows not to not to do that path again because you're worried something might happen to you in this lifetime and learning how to discern between any old lifetimes and now so it could be that um yes definitely extra protection but i would start with that path first so start with that and see if any more additional information starts coming through for you and also i would work with your guides and angels and say hey teach me to feel like what it's like to be safe 
channeling psychic information or sharing my psychic gifts with people and the world or working with oracle cards. Teach me what that feels like to feel safe. So I would definitely do that. Okay. So, Shalini, while well, doing a mediumship practice, I saw a dragonfly in their energy and gave you a positive vibe. That's wonderful. So go and look up dragonfly. As I said, I, and I've mentioned it before, Ted Andrews' book is fantastic. Um, that, you know, anything to do with animal medicine, I would go and definitely look that up. Hello, Eileen. Okay, so Mindy, um, so I go a lot further into grounding yourself and working on a higher level in the Master Health Readings course and Psychic Wellness. So I literally have hours and hours and hours on different ways that I strengthen my a vibration so that when I'm reading, I don't nail myself, <laughs> basically. I don't end up like a piece of jellyfish just flat on the floor and sobbing. <laughs> so I, I do suggest looking at that if you're doing a lot of readings, um, especially if you want to be a professional, but if you've done a lot of readings and you've practiced the psychic tips in this course, so how to be psychic, you've gone and done all the rituals I've talked about in the psychic protection and you've used the crystals that I suggest. If you've tried that and it's not making much of a difference, then go to that next level. So maybe look at that intermediate level course and going into the grounding tips I use in that. So as I said, it's like hours and hours of information. So it's kind of beyond the scope of this, but I'd look at that psychic wellness and ways you can raise your vibration so that you don't feel so drained. And and, and also, I know this, this sounds like a weird practical trip, but t- uh, tip, but just check in with yourself. Like how many readings do you need to be doing? Maybe there is a, a such thing for you as too many. I got really good with that with my boundaries um, several years <laughs> into my profession where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm drained and I've tried all this other stuff and I'm doing too many readings and I could feel it. And I, I was like, okay, I need to take a break and do something else for a while. Or I need to maybe, um, you know, get another quick stream of income, like maybe run a workshop for a while and just take a break from readings for a couple of weeks because I feel like I'm doing too many. So, you know, as I said, it could be that you just need to take a break or it might be you need to just go to this other level where you're looking at deeper levels of rituals and grounding and keeping that, what I call the daily vibration high so that you don't get so knocked around. But first, as I said, if you haven't already, try what is in this course. Try those very basic rituals and see how you go with that. Oh, so I said earlier with rabbits. Um, so for me, rabbits mean, I go with the Chinese astrology one with rabbits. And, and this is, again, why interpreting animals, that, well, just like interpreting dreams, is so personal. So there is definitely another meaning for rabbits, which I don't know right now off the top of my head. Apologies. So, And sometimes for me, I go, what is it? And I go, oh, I'm getting the Chinese astrology thing. And and that might be because I am a rabbit. <laughs> so I know a lot about it. So as soon as I see rabbits or feel rabbits, it's like I go into what I know about that. And that is, for me, rabbits to me are very home in the burrow. Um, they're very industrious. You know, you don't see necessarily like that. They dig and dig and dig and dig. So I would look at anything around the home world, like trying to feel safe within the home. But they're also quite plentiful and joyous. I mean, you know, you know, like you see rabbits playing and it brings a big smile to your face. So do a little bit of your own research and maybe try two or three different sources and see what resonates with you. As I said earlier, sometimes it can mean something individually different with a person. Um, shot back into the woods. So they came around and they were talking about it and I popped it up and shot back into the woods. Lo and behold, ah, something, <laughs> that's so funny. Something pulled you to watch. Sorry, Pamela, so you must have missed that early bit where I talked about the rabbit. Yeah, so that's that's so funny. That's so meant to be. So, yeah, for me, it's something often about the home. So it's about, you know, burrowing deep and wanting to just kind of feel in and to feel in the home and to feel a bit safe and protected. Oh, Lauren, so how do you heal subconscious blocks to open your gifts? I feel like there's a fear to coming in negative energies. So there's a few ways. Um, I've mentioned a couple already. So the first thing, which is probably the, not the easiest one, but probably the one that I first throw off the bat in my own journey, is I, I will go in and look at 
my own belief systems and what's stopping me. So I mentioned earlier about that Boost Your EFT course. I highly recommend it. So many people have had huge breakthroughs by practicing using EFT to just unlock what the block is. Because once you have that, then you can release it. And EFT also helps you. Um, so what I teach you in this course is I, I teach you how to no longer feel anxious about the block. And that's a massive thing because our anxiety and our emotions are often what exacerbates it and makes it harder to get clarity and to get insights and to get the reason behind why the block is there or why the fear is there. So it kind of gets down into that unconscious as you as you were talking about. I often find automatic writing helps, like journaling a lot, stuff comes out. And if you haven't done the past life therapy course, there could be something in there too. So I would look at that. If you go, nope, none of those, sorry Sal, not keen on any of that, then I would look at working with a spiritual healer. So that I would look at if you go, look, I don't really want to do this myself. I want, you know, I want to just pay someone. I would look at working with someone else because sometimes that's what I do too. So sometimes if the block is too deep, I'll go and work with a healer, like a kinesiologist or a theta healer or some other kind of healer to do that. So I'd look at that, my love. Um, but definitely, I mean, a, a much cheaper alternative is just to start with looking at that course and see if you can come to where the belief is coming from. Pamela, I've done EFT for different reasons. It works. It does. Look, I'm, I use it nearly, probably at least once every couple of weeks whenever something comes up for me. And I love the quickness of it for me because I, as I said, I've done a lot of different types of healings and sometimes healings can take months to sort of really start to unfold and, and, and be effective in my life. But EFT, I often find that I'm feeling calmer within a day or at least sometimes even a few hours. So I would look at that, look at combining that with the journaling as well. Oh, Mindy, EFT and tapping. So it's just emotional freedom technique. So I have a course um, called Boost Your EFT with... <laughs> Boost your psychic gifts with EFT tapping. And basically I teach you how to go in and release emotional blockages that may be stopping you from accessing your psychic gifts, stopping you from accessing your angels. So that's on Udemy. Um, you can find it on my Facebook page under services or in any of my courses you're enrolled in at the very end, the last few lectures, there'll be a, a link to how you can get the course at a discount. So you can go in and look at there as well. Um, and so basically it's, it's based on a combination of your meridians. So it's like a combination of your like meridians, like accurate acupuncture and acupressure so it's not you're not putting needles in you're just activating key points that are releasing negative emotions and negative beliefs and then you're tapping in the positive basically it's and it sounds like a bit like if you when I first heard about it which is probably 16 years ago now and started practicing it I was like what how does that work you know and I, I couldn't get my head around it but I've been doing it with myself, my clients, my students for so many years now, I, I do find it probably the quickest thing you can do to start unblocking stuff. And especially when you're connecting with your higher beings. I hope that's helped my love. Um, how do you know you're a healer? Okay, that's a great question. Um, you help people, Crystal, you help people in the last weeks, putting love into the event, South Peter's perspective, and sometimes heal them. Okay, so the okay, first question is, um, don't worry about the concept of am I a healer or a not? Like if you've been drawn to do any kind of healing work, then you're a healer. Like that doesn't have to mean you're going to go on to become a professional healer. Like, you know, or even a healer, like nurses are healers. So, you know, we can be healed, teachers are healers. Like there's different versions of what it means to be a healer. But if you went in and helped someone with these current blocks and you had that success, then I would say, yes, look at that beautiful path. Like for me, the way I knew I was a healer was a few things happened I just started healing people like first of all I started healing people and I started thinking it and I blocked it and I said no I'm not going to become a healer and then I remember I went to my wonderful network chiropractor Ewan McMillan um, in Sydney and he said Sal you know you're meant to be an energy healer don't you <laughs> and he was almost like come on because he could obviously see it radiating off me and me trying to stop it for many 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 years and it was just like oh Okay, okay, I'm getting it now. So it can be the signs come that way. Practice through the cards and see what comes up. But look, if you're doing that already, then yes, you are already a healer. Don't worry about doubting or knowing it. Like you are, absolutely. Um, Pamela. Yeah, EFT is the full, so it's emotional freedom technique and tapping. It's the same, yeah, it's the same thing. Hello, Samantha. Um, 
Oh, thank you, Tiara. You definitely had that course and loved your first past life um, experience. Awesome. Uh, Leslie, Spirit's been helping you with visual telepathy, mediumship, you guess. However, you have trouble visualizing anything and then you start doubting that any of it's real and you wonder if you're making it up. Spirit tells me to trust my intuition, but it's not easy. Look, first of all, honey, this is what everyone goes through. Like, I don't know any psychics that straight away, 100% always trust everything that comes through. Like, that is, and so for me, what I found, the sooner I accepted that, <laughs> the less difficult it became on my journey. So you're gonna have doubts and you're gonna doubt yourself. So if you start from that perspective, then it won't be as frightening or scary for you. What I do for me is, I don't know if, you, if you've done psychic readings intermediate level, but I, I do that a lot more in that course too, is when I get something and I hit a, rock, a brick wall, I stop, I pull back. I tell the client, I say, I'm not sure what's going on with this card. And I take a moment and I close my eyes and I breathe in and out and I go, what do I need to know? And then if stuff comes in and it still sounds a bit out there, I just say, look, I know this sounds out there, but this is what I'm getting. And I kid you not, I would say eight and a half times out of 10, uh, I, they will say exactly spot on, yes. Oh my God, I can't believe this, that's what's going on. So share whatever comes out, okay? And and. I often, sometimes maybe I'd say that little tiny percentage point, I've got it wrong, or that they haven't really gotten it yet. And that might, they might come back to me in a few months and say, oh my God, you were so spot on. That's exactly what, I'm, what happened or what I mean. So try that, try and see that. Okay. Um, Pamela, no, I don't think it's frozen. I haven't got anyone else, everyone else is seeing me. So it might be just that your internet's gone funny. Um, definitely a healer, you answered your own question, yes. Love your courses. Okay, I'm going to stop answering questions now and move on to the other questions, but I will come back to you. I'm right at um, Jackie's question, and I'll come back to Jackie's question. So, um, uh, oh, okay. So, I'm going to move on now and just talk a little bit. Um, Alan's question about spirit guides and angels. Oh, I actually asked about which angels will help me with my work and he knew that Shamuel can help you find things but what angels help you with work and feeling overwhelmed and feeling like there's just too many problems and and what do I do which angels for that so I thought about this answer this morning and how to answer it and it was like well there are specific angels that can help you with your life purpose and work and I'm about to release a career course so I'll talk a lot about that in that so things like Archangel Michael will help you remember who you are and he can help you with your life purpose Gabrielle for me helps communicate what it is I need so I will often go I'm just going to do some journaling I don't know what I'm supposed to know Gabrielle can you help get this out of me um, and, and obviously specific work things I would try and do a little bit of note-taking Alan and think about what aspect of work are you having a problem with is it that there's too much work so if there's too much work, you feel like you're being over fairly burdened, then look at an angel that can help you have boundaries. Um, so, And even if you don't know that angel's name, just say, whoever helps with boundaries, <laughs> can you come in and help me? I also love to look at working with the angels as, as offering me creative solutions. And this puts the ball back in my court. So instead of just um, saying to angels, okay, just give me what I need and like a shopping cart, I say, can you help me find a creative solution to this problem? Because I'm really having problems with work and I need you to help me find a creative solution. And I think that's a much better approach because you're not looking then for some um, mystery answer to just be written in the sky <laughs> or an angel to come stand before you and give you the answer. It's, it's them helping you feel like you've got what it takes to find the answer. And I and that's how I get my little intuitive nudges. So it's almost like, um, I, I can't remember what course it is, but I talk about how in my very early days of starting my psychic career, I was, I was working with angels a lot and I wa walked into a shop in Manly and I asked the lady behind the counter, I bought a crystal and I said to her, and, and I kind of walked out and it's the intuition and my angel said, go back in, go back in and ask her for a job. And I was like, no. I don't want to do that. That's horrible. And I've been praying. I've been sitting on this rock, of, you know, like the hour before praying for the angels to give me a job. 
<laughs> and the intuition said, go back in and ask her. And I went, no, that doesn't make sense. I don't want to ask her if she's got any tarot reading positions. I don't want to do that. And, and I resisted. And then I went back in and it turned out she was looking for someone to cover a shift, you know, every second Tuesday. And so, again, like that's how it kind of works for me. Like angels help me help you know, they're not going to necessarily show you the job they're going to point you in that right direction and give you those nudges to do that so i'd look at that instead of necessarily going a specific angel going i mean you could use those ones like i mentioned but first start with your journaling and narrow down what you're having the problem with is it too much work not enough work is it the people at work if it's the people at work then that's archangel raguel like looking at um healing any kind of miscommunications and problems um if it's that you don't have enough work look at the money and abundance angels so archangel ariel and prosperity and abundance and and look at that because that might be something that needs shifting and healing and they can help you with that but most of all i i work with the angels when i'm overwhelmed and ask them to help me with my overwhelm i go whoever's out there <laughs> just help me with my overwhelm because sometimes i'm so overwhelmed that anything they send me i'm just not going to receive it so it's much better to just ask them all just ask blanket <laughs> blanket prayer and then just give it a bit of time to see what comes through so i hope that helps anyone who's looking a bit more for more specific angels okay now, Jackie, you're working with a spiritual healer shaman. Some days you can't, you can feel, other days you can't. My day job's an emergency. Oh, my love. Thank you, my beautiful nurse friend, for doing what it is you do. If, if it's one thing that COVID has taught us, it's how much we need to honour our gorgeous nurses. Um, so thank you for what you do. I would definitely say yes. Um, working in that current environment that you are in, especially right now, I would say that probably knocks you a lot. And and I'd say that that's okay. That you, I, I don't think you necessarily need to go and fix anything with that. I would just say, okay, I just have to acknowledge right now that some days I'm going to be on it and have my mojo and some days I'm going to be flat. Um, so start with that little bit of just acknowledgement rather than kind of either resisting or fighting or being anxious and worried and feeling like you have to fix it straight away. Then I would start saying to your angels and guides, okay, how can I gently, <laughs> you don't want any big massive soul lessons right now, but how can I gently start to work with this? How can I gently start to balance this so that there's balance and so that, um, I do feel like I'm getting it right all the time. And just put that question out to them because it might be something as simple as you just need to go for a walk after your shift or you just need to come home and, and hug a plant for five minutes or you just need to uh, work with some crystals or you just need to make sure before you go you're a bit more protected or you just need to take a break from doing some readings. So do a little ritual like that where you just do a connection with them and say, what is it I need so that I, my mojo can be elevated more often. Um, but as I said, it might simply be that you're not meant to be doing as many as well. But acknowledgement of your own beautiful, I mean, I love that you're so aware that perhaps that's what's impacting upon you instead of pressuring yourself. I think that's the first step. So try that first and then start to go in the other way. But, you know, don't ever feel like, and if you ever, and I, and I, I teach this a lot in my courses, I say, if you're tired, please don't do a reading. I'm like, Say to that person, you'll get back to them, reschedule, you know, have that self-love for you and for them to say, look, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just absolutely exhausted and reschedule. People will understand. Like for me, in my experience, in 90% of the time when I've had to reschedule because I've been wiped out or I've had an emotional crisis or something's gone on in my personal life, people understand and, 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 they, and they're much happier. It, it works better for them if you're on top of the world, basically. So I hope that helps my love. Jackie, um, and I don't think you're shutting yourself off. So I'm getting pins and needles here. <laughs> um, I don't think you're shutting yourself off. Just, I get what you mean. Sorry. Yes. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're probably yeah doing something where you're energetically protecting yourself because you don't want to open up anymore. But maybe just, um, I would bring the readings down for now until you feel like you've gotten a bit more space. And, and as I said, keep in mind, we're in COVID. Like never has there been a more stressful period for nurses, you know, in our history, really. Um, it's, you know, so just keep that in mind and be very gentle with yourself when you're doing that. Okay. Awesome, Leslie, you're definitely staying with it. Yes, so true, Shruti. Anytime, Michael, any of the angels, you can ask them anytime for help. 
uh, Shalini, once I was communicating with angels through angel cards and the experience was so overwhelming, you started crying. <laughs> I love that. That often help, happens because we it's a kind of a feeling like we're coming home. It's a feeling like, oh, it just feels so good. And then sometimes we grieve because we don't want to get out of it. We want to just stay in that space. Or it can be that, yeah, it's like we trigger this incredible memory where we felt like we were always connected to our angels. So we never felt grief and we never felt pain and we never felt anxiety. And so that, again, that can trigger that feeling of longing and wistfulness. Um, that's a great question. Um, Yukta. So um, do angels communicate directly or send some signs? So for me, it's both. Um, and it will just depend on the circumstance. So, so with um, so in looking at how to com connect with them, when you say you've done my psychic course, so have you done, you've done how to be psychic? And did you try the how to connect with your angel thing? If you just answer that for me, I can answer that a little bit better. So you can do it through something like that, through a guided meditation where you go up, or you can do it quite, quite the, the kind of better you get at it and the more you practice, the, the easier it comes in. For me, strengthening constantly um, your, your clairvoyance and your clairaudience and working in those gifts, that is what helps elevate my connection with my guides and angels. Um, but also, as I mentioned earlier, like but being able to raise your vibration. So I, I hear them much clearer when I am doing more meditation or I hear them much clearer if, if I'm particularly got a, you know, something I need answered. Or as I mentioned earlier with EFT tapping, like I hear them a lot when I... And that's the, one of the things in that course I teach you how to do is the little ritual that I do before I do readings. Because I used to, like everybody, get really anxious before doing readings. And so I had this little tapping thing I do that stops me getting so anxious so that I trust the messages that are coming through. So that's a good one too. So looking at that. Um, Okay, so oh, so you've done the meditation. You do it three, two or three, up three or sorry, two to four times a month. Okay, so if you haven't, if if you haven't had success with that, I would look at okay, maybe it's a block. Maybe if I can't connect with them at all, then there might be a block. And as I mentioned earlier, with um, um, sorry, I can't remember who our thesis asked that question. If you've got a block, then you can either look at working with a spiritual healer to unblock the third eye or do some Reiki, or I would look at the either past life therapy. If you really want to go in and look at what the past life thing could be about where the blocks come from, or I would do the EFT course because that just goes into basically relaxing yourself so you feel more open. So I hope that helps. Liz, how long should you practice on a daily basis? So you're going to laugh. I am not the world's biggest meditator. I'm not. Like I... I have a very busy mind and I try um, and I often, I talk about this in the health course, I think, um, when I can't meditate, I get outside and I go for a walk and I, and I get out in nature and that's my kind of meditation. For me, I think when I do though, when I'm practicing it and I'm doing good, <laughs> I try to just set it for 10 minutes a day. That works for, I know there's some people that do four hours, five hours, that's way too much work for me. Um, I had a very interesting conversation with a wonderful yoga teacher who lives in the Whit Sundays in Ely Beach last week. She gave me an incredible massage and she's a really good yoga teacher. And she told me about stretching and stuff and she said, look, and this is coming from a yoga student woman, a woman who's owned five yoga studios in Noosa in Australia. And she said to me very honestly, so if you find you're not getting up every morning and doing a yoga, then just don't do it. Just do five minutes. Like, don't feel like you have to do an hour and a half, like, and you have to do it. Like, just do what you can do. And I think meditation is the same. If you can just do five minutes a day, try five minutes a day. If you can do two minutes of just sitting there and connecting in with your body and feeling how your body is pressed against the chair and just saying to your mind, I don't have to think about anything right now, even that's enough. And if you skip a day, that's okay too. Like don't, don't set up the shoulds for yourself. Just set up the, for me, the positive intentions of what I'd like to do. Okay, I'd like to meditate a few times a week and, and try that. So I hope that helps my love. Oh, Eileen, you love the past life ingression? Yes. Oh, Tiara, your past life therapy session was awesome. Thank you. I'm so glad. I do. Look, I love doing that with clients and I love it when students do it on themselves. I think it's so powerful when you see what it is that's standing in your way and how quickly it falls away from that. Um, 
So to unblock the third eye, who do I recommend? So I, there are lots of people that practice Reiki that can do that. Um, I have a list of healers that if you, if you email my beautiful assistant, Kathy at team at saljade.com, um, cause I'm not doing healings at the moment because of my teaching and she can give you a list of people that I've worked with before that can help you. Um, so the people I know, um, but also you can just do simple exercises with crystals. You can do little simple, it depends on how deep the, the, the blockage is. Again, I'm kind of speaking to what I've spoken about previously. We're all incredibly different. Sometimes some people might have just a really, a little, what I call like when you tune into someone, you can just see a little bit of a smear over their third eye or, and it's just a small thing and it's nothing big and, and it can be done quite quickly so it might just be a matter of waving um a, a, you know like a clear quartz over your head or and calling in the angels to remove your blockage and that's it it's gone for other people this could be something that has been going on for many lifetimes or it could be something that they have experienced for a long time and so you might need some kind of deeper healing modality so as i said before either the tapping or looking at um um past life therapy or working with an actual spiritual healer and going in and doing or getting getting some kind of healing on it would can help as well but as I said there's no kind of one way fits all because we all have such different stories and we all have such beautiful journeys of where our third eye blockage comes from and you know for a lot of the time I find with people that are drawn to psychic work and these kind of courses a lot of it comes from either their childhood so they were made to believe, like they might have grown up in a religious household and they were told that it was wrong um, to, to, to connect with angels or wrong to have psychic gifts or past lives. They're the, kind of the two most common ones that I find. Um, so I hope that helps my love. Oh, um, how can we do past life therapy? Pamela, I have a course on Udemy. It's called Remove Psychic Blocks with Past Life Therapy. If you go into... Um, I, they might have a sale on now. Go in if they don't have a sale on now. Um, there is in my in the very end of this course in the last lectures there is a thing saying um, your bonus gifts or something like that. If you click on that in one of those lectures, it'll show you all my different courses and there's a link in there where you can get a discount. So the healings I do, I do a combination of theta healing and angelic healing and crystal healing and clairvoyant healing. It's kind of like this big evolved thing that happened for me where I started off with theta healing and I'd done angel therapy and I kind of, that just kind of organically came in and then I'd bring, and then depending on the client and what's going on, I might bring in a tapping session for them or I might do a past life regression on them or, you know, it's, it's very, I might do a crystal healing on them. So it's different for each client. I'm usually very intuitively guided with that. So it, it's always a different thing. There's no kind of one size stretches all because it's usually me just tuning in going, what does this person need? And then I bring those different modalities in. So I hope that helps. Um, da, da, da. Oh, Shalini, thank you for designing the course in this group, Sal. It's been a life-changing experience. Got you back to the right path and you can't thank me enough. Oh, thank you so much, Shalini. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next questions. Keep posting them. If I've missed your question, I'm sorry. It goes really, really fast, so sometimes I miss them. Um, pop them in here. So my next thing I'd like to talk about is... Oh, um, so someone asked recently... Um, after I finish this course, you know, will I be confident enough to give readings? Now, again, it, it actually kind of speaks to what I've been speaking to throughout this um, seminar for you, and that is everyone's different. Um, no one is, there's no one size fits all for your psychic development. So when I first got started, whatever that was, in 2004, 2005, and I did Doreen Virtue's three-day angel therapy practitioner course, I was in a room of 700 people, and we all did the same program. And at the end of it, we all went on in our different directions and all over Australia and did different things. And some people went on to become professionals. Some people just used it in their personal lives. Some people felt like they needed to do more courses. Some people, you know, it, it's, it's different for everybody. So, and again, getting back to, I know I'm going on a lot about the blocks, but it depends also a lot on what blocks you have. Um, in Psychic Readings Intermediate Level, I talk in Section 8 about 
the common fears and doubts and blocks that people can have and how to how to solve them because the, and there's 26 of them that's how many different blocks we can have that i've seen on my clients that i've seen similar to my own up to 26 <laughs> so again please don't let me put this off it's an exciting journey trying to unblock them and this is again i'm getting i'm speaking back to the when question um you know that's why there is no when because sometimes we have to go on a beautiful journey and the journey is such a crucial part of us stepping into who we're meant to be. Like I could never be the healer I am today, the teacher I am today, the person who can help you guys today if I hadn't had uncleared all my own blocks, if I hadn't gone through that myself. And so just say to yourself, okay, what you know what is my unique journey like start looking at your journey as being very different to everybody else's and going okay well i'll try to practice as much as i can some people can't practice every day um some people got other commitments and i might need to do some further studies or i might feel confident enough at the end of this um you know so it's different for everybody okay let's have a look what we got next i hope that's helped anyone who's wondering about that same question Crystal, my friend said she suddenly started seeing others past lives since February. Oh, wow. Wow, and she's seeing everybody's past life. That is huge. She can't stop shaking. No, oh, oh, honey, you said you wish you'd evolved like that too. You don't want to evolve like that quickly. And then that's, that's actually, sorry, I mean, thank you. Not sorry, thank you. <laughs> that's actually given me even more inspiration to go back to what I just spoke about. Um, that's why the confidence level has to be individual in terms of um, you know the divine timing of when you discover your gifts and when you discover that things are you're feeling more confident. I I'm very uh, people often say to me, oh that's so great that you've got these psychic gifts. You know, do you just want to you know then you can look all the time and find the answers? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like you've got to be discerning with your psychic gifts. You've got to be protective with your psychic gifts you've, because you don't want to be open all the time. I don't consider, like, that is evolved in the gifts definitely, but that can also be tremendously intense on someone's energy body and on their physical body and on their mental, like all of that. Like, and it's really important to just trust that you will open up in perfect time for what your soul is ready for and what you need. Putting the pressure on yourself to fast forward it will only make you feel upset with yourself and comparing yourself with others will only make you feel like more blocked. So it's much better to go, okay, that's, I mean, I, and I know, I understand this, trust me, trust me, like when I first got started and because I'd managed psychics for a long time before I became professional and I remember thinking like, you know, because I'd I'd, I'd be chatting to them while I was managing them and I'd be thinking, oh my God, I'm never going to, and I was studying it, I'm never going to be that good. I'm never going to be able to do that. Oh my goodness, you're so lucky. <laughs> you know, but it just took my own path. It took my own unblocking and it took my own, you know, some, I did further studies in certain areas. I went beyond that first course and I did other stuff. And, and you know, for some people it comes straight away and some people they just need more time and that's totally okay. Like there's nothing wrong with taking a bit more time. So I hope that helps, love. Eileen, you did my past life course and then you did the hypnotherapy practice and, and you've done past life. Oh, wow. Combining it. Yes, I love those combinations because hypnosis, you know, that is, it's a form of hypnosis, that regression. I think that's a beautiful combination. And you become the psychic hypnotherapist. I love that. Awesome. It all started with how to be psychic. Yeah, so Eileen's a beautiful example. Like there's not one direct path like she did this course and then she went on to do who um psych, uh, remove psychic blocks with past life therapy and then she went off on the hypnotherapist path and found that path too and then kind of combined them all and that's that's how it works you kind of start somewhere and you broaden out on the tree and and find that beautiful journey oh yukta, yukta i'm going to do that at the end sweetie because i just want to get through everyone's questions first Volume is a bit low. Is anyone else having problems with the volume? That might be your volume, sweetie, because I don't. No one else is telling me I'm low, and I'm usually the loudest person in the world. <laughs> Sometimes I've just finished my three-month advanced tarot program, and I can't tell you how many times I. No, it's plugged in. I can't tell you how many times I did their their Zoom coaching calls, and I had my, I didn't have my earplugs in, but I was still talking, and they could still hear me. <laughs> 
Melanie, it's hard to get the word out to people for psychic readings. It didn't work with Facebook and tried YouTube and only got five views. So Melanie, I have a, if you go onto my YouTube channel, um, I have a thing called the five, uh, three essential key tips to succeeding online or something like that. Um, and I can post it here for you afterwards. And if you go through that and have a look, and I'll, it'll let you know that, yes, working online is not something that happens overnight. It takes a while to build up your business. It can take up to a year because really when you're thinking about online working, it's so different from working in a shop or having a bricks and mortar business where people come into your home because the concept of word of mouth is very different on Facebook. It takes a, it takes a while for people to get to know you. So think about, and I, I talk about a lot about this in my three month advanced tarot program about how you need to look at Facebook as building relationships so people trust you and then they'll buy off you. But that takes time. That doesn't happen overnight. It is a, a, a patient thing. And, and I know people get frustrated because they think, oh my God, I just, I just want to work online and I want to get myself out there. So I, I know it sounds funny, but I think it's easier to run a community-based business when you're in your community than it is to do an online business. Doesn't mean it, you can't do it and you can't succeed, but you do need to learn about how to market yourself online and maybe invest a bit in a course, either one of my courses or go on to Udemy and look at that and, and, and look at a, a course on how to build your YouTube profile. But it does take some time is all I can say, my love. And my heart goes out to you because I know it is challenging. But as I said, look at that free seminar I gave. It applies to tarot businesses, but it's any psychic business really, about three key tips to remember when you're trying to start your online business and how to grow your business. Yep, yeah, volume's fine on your end. Cool. So I hope that helps, Melanie. Yes. Okay, cool. So I'm going to now talk about the PDF as well if you haven't seen the pdf yet so in um so kathy's posting this once a week i think at the moment and i've spoken about it previously if you go into our search bar in how to be psychic and do hashtag pdf you'll see a feedback template that i've created now if you're offering free readings in this group in exchange for um, feedback please send this to everybody that you do it for before you do the reading so i'm trying to stamp out this behavior where people don't return feedback because that's obviously really heartbreaking when you've done that but because it's such a massive group like we're 4,000 people it's really hard to do that with such a big group without kind of policing it so I've got a new system in place where if someone hasn't returned your feedback after 14 days so you've given them the reading and or the exchange and you've sent them a reminder and they haven't got back to you after 14 days contact Kathy at team at saljade.com and she's going to add that name to a list and then once a month i'm going to tag everyone in that list in the group and say hey lovely just a gentle reminder that your feedback is now due so that achieves two things one it reminds that person just in case for some reason something's going on with their messengers or whatever but it also if they are someone who unfortunately occasionally Psychic groups do attract people who just come in and take free readings and don't give back. If someone has that intention, then you can see that when you are choosing people. If you can see they've got overdue feedback and they haven't handed it back yet, then you know, okay, maybe I won't do a reading for that person. I want to wait till they've given their feedback back. So that's a, a new system I'm putting in play to hopefully try and stamp out this kind of behavior. But as I said, First, I've noticed there's been like an over 80% decrease in complaints about this since people started sending that feedback format to people. It's a really detailed template. So it just people who take the time to fill in that template and take the time to answer those questions and do that, like they're the ones you want to give readings to. So I hope that makes sense, my love. Loves. Uh, hello from Toronto. Uh, okay, so... Oh, so now I've got a competition going. So my next course that I'm going to be releasing in time for Black Friday is going to be about career readings. So I've, as you guys know, I've done a course. You've got, you've got How to Be Psychic, which is the basic foundation course. Then you've got the intermediate level course where I go into like strengthening your clairvoyant and asking when questions and looking at, you know, the blocks we have and different things like that and how to connect on a higher level with angels. And then I've got... Um, then I've got my niche courses. I've got a health 
health course and I've got a love readings course and this is going to be the career course. So it's basically going to that next level and being learning how to give career readings with, with Oracle cards, with your guides and angels and tuning in with your guides and angels and which guides and angels to work with, as well as also how to do it with tarot cards. And so part of what I'm doing, so I did this with Psychic Readings Intermediate Level as well, I ran a competition where in, in this group, I'm going to pick a winner and give them a free career reading and I'm going to give that and record it and it's going to go into the course so you'll be able to see it completely live in the course so what I'd like if you want to join this competition um, first of all make sure you want to do a career reading <laughs> don't enter the competition if you've got no interest in getting a career reading because it'll be a very strange reading indeed so if you really want to get a career reading um, and you want to join the competition this is how to join so the way the competition works is that I'm going to draw it in one month's time and I'm gonna pull just a name out of the hat. And basically, if you complete this course within the next month and any other courses that you have of mine, or if you sign up to any of my courses in the meantime, and you complete them, you send, you, so you post this in the group. So you post a, a snapshot of your certificate and you put hashtag career competition. So career reading competition, hashtag career reading competition, or if you're not on Facebook, you can actually, that much, you can actually go, um, you can send it to Kathy at team at saljay.com. And I, and the more entries, so the more times you've finished courses, the quicker you kind of get through the courses and finish them in the next four weeks. You say, you've got four weeks, so I feel like you've got to do this tomorrow. Then the more entries you get. Now you might say, oh, Sal, I've only done one of your courses, you know, maybe I shouldn't enter. Trust me, I've been running these competitions for years and often people do win who maybe you've only done two or three of my courses that haven't even done all of my courses. So once someone won who'd only done one of my courses. So it's sometimes it's not, obviously the more entries you've got, the better chance you've got, but sometimes it's actually people that win that have only done a couple of courses. So I'll go through those instructions again. So work through your courses that you've already enrolled in or if there's ones you're thinking about enrolling in and Complete them by the 12th of October. That's the 11th of October in the US. On the 14th of October, Kathy's gonna send me that list and I'm gonna pull someone out of the hat and they will get their career reading. So I will reach out to that person and let them know and we'll negotiate about you know what question they want answered specifically and then it will appear in the course. So let me know if you've got any further questions with that. I'm very excited. This was an amazing, I loved doing this with Psychic Readings Intermediate Level. So I had, I, I had three people. So I did one in How to Be Psychic. I did one in Tarot Mastery and one in, I think, um, on my business card, I think it was, my business um, page. And so I, I gave readings for three different people and they, and it was a really fantastic thing to do. I really loved doing it and they got a lot out of it too. And obviously it was great for people to see me practicing on people that they actually knew as well. So any questions about the competition, pop them here. And I've done two of your courses and I love them and got so much out of them. Psychic development for beginners and remove blocks with the past life therapy and found them helpful. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to quickly, thank you so much, Anne. I think I've answered everyone's questions. If I haven't, I apologize because sometimes the thing goes crazy fast. Okay, so I'll quickly recap for those of you who maybe joined me a bit later. If you see an animal on someone, that can often mean something individual to that person. So it might mean something specifically, or it can be that that's their totem guide, or it could mean that they obviously might have that animal in their life. Do a bit of research and, and be really, it's great as a psychic reader to, to be confident in knowing what different animals mean. But as I mentioned earlier, sometimes, like for me, I might see a dragon and, be, and I just get all this other information that comes through. So, you know, keep that in mind too. When it comes to timing with oracle card readings, you can do like a five card spread over 12 months, or you can do what do I need to know? That helps too. Um, making sure that like um, when that you, you know, try not to do too many when questions. I know people wanna know that, but it can end up being very frustrating for you because sometimes the answers aren't ready to reveal themselves. And also angels and guides don't have time. They don't have a concept of time. 
if you're looking to um, boost, like if you feel like you can't connect with your angels enough and you're struggling, I do suggest looking at EFT tapping. So my course on that teaches specifically, I, I like I teach specifically psychic gifts and healing. That's that's it's it's not for like if I've got a, a bad toe or money blocks. It's specifically focused on that for the whole course. It's like five hours of clearing those kind of blocks. So that could really help with that too. I highly recommend that. If you feel like there's a block that might come from a past life look at that as well when it comes to when look at your intuition and what else did i talk about today yeah, I've gone like oh if you want to do the join the competition then i'll be drawing it you've got four weeks to get those entries in you just have to post hashtag career reading competition in this group so kathy can scroll through and find all the entries she'll add it in and give that to me and i will draw it out on the 14th of october australia day time 13th of October, if you are in the US. Uh, Kat, can we post all, yes, yeah, post all the certificates you've already done as well, not just new ones. So yes, definitely. Um, ah, Tiara, so I do these, so I do, um, I do, I alternate the months. I do one once, I do um, one month I do in How to Be Psychic and next month I do in Tarot Card Success. And so I do it back and forth like that. So you'll see me here at the beginning of November, although you will see me also here when I draw the competition. So feel free to come along and you can do a hashtag sneaky Q&A with me then as well. Awesome. If anyone's got any other questions, pop them in here. If you're joining me for the replay, put hashtag replay so I know. And... Oh, no, you can, Crystal, you can start with one. You don't need, you can, like, to enter the competition, you only need to, a minimum of one. So you only need to have con completed even how to be psychic to enter. But the more of my courses that you've completed, the, the more entries you get, if that makes sense. Okay, my loves, I hope that has helped everybody. And as always, thank you so much for joining me. It's been, it's been a great Q&A session. You guys have asked really amazing questions. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Mwah! And I will speak to you soon. Bye. I always forget how to end it. Ah, there.